Coming off a, a physical uh, and gritty win against the rival of Al Rocket earlier this week, Coach, um, what were the keys in that victory? What did your team do so well to earn two points? Well, I, I, I really thought uh, systematically that uh, we did a good job. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about our structure and, you know, obviously when you get a lot of moving parts uh, within the roster, sometimes it's more difficult uh, to establish that on a game-to-game -game basis. But uh, overall, I thought it was uh, real good, you know, and uh, anytime, you know, when the chances uh, end up, you know, 19-15 or 18-15, that's what you kind of like to see as a coach. That means you're uh, generating enough uh, and we like to try and get above 16 as a team and, and we did that we were at 18 and try and keep the opposition under 15 and uh, we had them right at 15 so uh, overall structurally I'd have to say that uh, really uh, really like that game from uh, from our boys and uh, we talked post game about the physical identity that this team has been developing over a few seasons and that seemed to be on full display on Wednesday as well yeah absolutely and uh, you know when we're engaged and, and physical all over the ice uh, it's part of our DNA you know it's part of that uh, uh, team uh, identity that you, you try to, uh, to build uh, out of training camp. And uh, as I said, uh, post game, you know, when you got players like Hetherington and Aspero on the back end, uh, Jack Doherty, who's been with us a number of years, who plays that style of hockey, and then you go out front and you got the Sabrins of the world, um, you know, that certainly helps uh, build that identity. And um, you're not going to get that from every, every uh, player because uh, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses, but certainly that's something uh, that we've been able to do. Uh, you get Rourke Sharche back from uh, the NHL, and he chips in with an assist on Wednesday. And uh, I think also kind of adds to that physical, uh, hard-working game uh, along the boards below the goal line. Yeah, and there's no doubt uh, there's a reason why he did well before his uh, injury and you know the injury comes from blocking a shot you know so uh, Schartz has uh, really established himself here the last two seasons with us that uh, uh, he comes to play and play at all of, uh, zones as we like to call it and he uh, helped the face-offs as well you know he was I believe 58% uh, on face-offs which is excellent and uh, whenever you got a guy like Castles and go on his strong side and a guy like Schartz on his side uh, it helps the face-offs as well so um, do I think there's another level to his game uh, that we've seen absolutely uh, always an adjustment coming back from the NHL and again injury he hadn't played in four weeks but overall I thought he was solid and obviously uh, had an assist on the game winner Another strong night for Kevin Mandeleze. Uh, he's earned an NHL recall, and obviously the circumstances in the goalie department have uh, a, a bit to do with that. But um, based on his play lately, uh, deserving of the look, you think? Well, I think, you know, Mando came to play the other night. You know, we, uh, as a coaching staff, challenged him to, uh, to be better in terms of... Uh, keeping the stoppable pucks out and, and trying to get his uh, goals against or team goals against and we talked to the, the the group like let's let's try and keep one less out of our net and uh, I thought he did a good job you know he battled through um, you know he's got a little bit of a hip situation going on and uh, so he battled through that throughout the game and uh, we like that about it, you know, because you got to bat battle through adversity, not only on how you're playing, but sometimes, you know, this time of year, you know, you're getting close to February, so uh, most players are banged up in some capacity. So I uh, liked his game and uh, certainly, uh, he, you know, it was a, uh, a moment for him where he does seem to play well in Laval as well, which is, which is awesome with parents and family around. So, um, but uh, again, talking goaltending is something we have to do here on a daily daily basis. Yeah, well, let's talk a little more goaltending. Uh, what's the plan this weekend? Uh, Luke Parasini signs a PTO uh, this morning and uh, has joined the team, and uh, Matt Sogard we know is close, but uh, what are we hoping this weekend? Well, Parasini's going to start tonight, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously PD did his, did his due diligence post-game the other night, to, um, and as, as as we did, to, to just see what else is out there, and, and, and at this when you think about the ECHL, you know, most of the higher end goalies are under contract of some sorts, whether it's AHL two ways or NHL deals. And uh, Parasini came in at training camp uh, for this purpose. You know, we, we you, you bring guys into your AHL training camp to take a look to see if you might need to, to bring him in at some point. So uh, we felt comfortable and, uh, you know, we're going to give him a look tonight. You know, here's his chance to, to give us a great 60 minutes. And then uh, uh, much like I feel every day since game one uh, when Sogart 
we're down five minutes in. Uh, the goaltending situation is a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah, it's fluid for sure. We'll see <laughs> what tomorrow brings. Absolutely. Um, to go back to the NHL conversation, Ridley Gregg made his debut, uh, sets the NHL record for most shots by a debutante in the league, and uh, obviously has garnered a lot of attention. Um, what kind of staying power does Ridley Gregg have right now, or, or do you think it's uh, one of those situations where he may need to come back for more seasoning? Yeah, I, I think it all depends. You know, uh, it doesn't surprise me the type of game he had. You know, like uh, he's been contributing on all areas of our game. You know, he's on the boards, over the boards for penalty killing and uh, faceoffs and, and power play. And, 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 you know, we're grooming him to be a, a complete 200 foot player at the NHL level. And, uh, you know, he will be that. And uh, for one night he was. And, um, you know, obviously he's got another three games prior to their, to their break to, uh, to make an impression. And, you know, I'm sure that if he continues to play well, uh, he will continue to stay up there. Uh, certainly not uh, something that uh, is part of my decision making, but uh, when it comes to him, you know, obviously a great start. Uh, him and I exchanged text messages yesterday, and he's a very humble kid, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to be ready against Toronto tonight. But, uh, you know, our only concern was his the size uh, and the strength and you know was he physically ready to to match up uh, for 15 to 18 minutes on a nightly basis against bigger stronger men so uh, for one night it worked obviously and uh, the reviews seem to be uh, excellent so uh, that's great for Ridley and uh, also good for uh, our coaching staff I guess. A couple more questions here for head coach Troy Mann ahead of this matchup with Springfield. Uh, Roby Arvente and Lassie Thompson are set to return tonight. Uh, how much do you have to temper the expectations? What are the expectations for uh, two guys who are big pieces of this club? Well, I, I would say get out of the game healthy. You know, that's first and foremost. You know, it's been three months for Robbie, almost to the day, uh, October 29th. And at the time of the injury, I joked with Robbie that I'd see him in early February. So I'm about a week off uh, in his return. He's probably doing it intentionally, uh, knowing that I kept tell, talking about early February. But uh, a tremendous skill set and uh, can certainly add to our game. And um, But we'll just have to, you know, watch his ice time and we'll get him on that second power play and uh, we'll get him on a, a line with uh, with Luch and, and Soko. They played together at points last year and uh, hopefully uh, Robbie will be energetic. That first game is usually a good one because they're energized and uh, bring up a, a lot of emotion to that first game back and Tomer's ready to go. You know he's been chomping at the bit here for about a week and a half now to uh, to get back in and uh, again just needs to be solid, stay healthy and uh, another guy that can bring a lot to the table at both sides of the puck, you know, whether it's offensively with a strong shot or, again, with uh, his ability to, to battle in front and, uh, and penalty kill. And so uh, once they get their, their games back, uh, obviously two great additions for us. And lastly, a couple competitive games against Springfield back at home earlier this season. What are the keys to knocking off the Thunderbirds again? Another team that you don't see uh, very much at all and, and in another building that's been difficult for this uh, this team over the years. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, just watching them play, uh, you know, on their recent road trip here through Grand Rapids and Milwaukee and Rockford, uh, um, you know, they play a similar style to us. You know, their gap control is excellent. Uh, so we'll see how... Uh, uh, frustrated our forwards may be tonight in terms of uh, pursuing the puck uh, versus possession at the blue line. Their forecheck uh, is, uh, looks to be very similar to ours, and uh, so our D will be under a lot of pressure here tonight. They haven't played all week either, so uh, they should have a tremendous amount of energy in their home building here. And uh, so for us, you know, our breakouts and our ability to get the puck uh, deep and then get on our forecheck and utilize that as a strength uh, will certainly be keys for us tonight. Thanks, Coach. I always appreciate the time. Okay, thanks, Footy. Head coach.